420. Uh. What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here. Today's video was going to be another react to the USCSB's channel, but unfortunately, we have some sad news. Founder of the widest kids you know, Trevor Moore, passed away, and individuals on my subreddit were asking me to pay tribute to him by reacting to one of their sketches. Just like any regular person, I have seen the widest kids you know. I knew who they are, I know some of their skits but I have definitely not seen every episode. So I'm excited to react to a courtroom sketch by the group. And again, I wish we were watching this for better reasons, but hey, let's power through and let's watch a funny skit. It is titled Opposite Day and it is from season one. Gentlemen of the jury, we have heard ironclad evidence. We have heard eyewitness testimonies. We have watched surveillance footage. We have even been read the signed confession by Mr. Picklecopter himself. Admit Is his last name Picklecopter? <laughs> Picklecopter. Admitting that on the night of May 30th, he did in fact murder his pregnant wife and dump her body in the Oak Ridge Quarry. In a minute, you folks are gonna get up. You're gonna go in that jury room. You're gonna return here with a verdict. Before you do, I want you to take a minute right now and I want you to think. I want you to think about poor Mrs. Picklecopter. I want you to think about that baby she never got to have. They're not here to speak for themselves today. That's your job. Thank you. Uh wow. Of all the TV show skits, videos that we've seen, that sounds very realistic. That is exactly how a closing argument sounds. At the end of a closing argument, you transfer the case from yourself to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, all the evidence is out there. You're gonna go back in the jury room and deliberate. You are the 12 most powerful people in the world for this case. The president of the United States does not have the power that you have. You control everything. And you will remember this decision for the rest of your life. You want to motivate them and inspire them to do the right thing to bring justice whatever justice is in that particular case because remember the case is always bigger than just this instance you are doing this to prevent something similar from happening in the future or to make a substantial change and as cheesy as that sounds it is the truth so a plus for that but i assume this is going to go off the rails pretty quickly all right, the prosecution rests. The defense will now make its closing statement. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm not going to stand here and bore you with the details of who probably killed who. The prosecution has done an excellent job at laying out the case against my client. I just want to say that wouldn't it be crazy if despite all that evidence you guys still came back with a not guilty verdict. <laughs> Think about it. It'd be crazy. It'd be huge news. It'd be on all the news channels in the country. Everyone would want to get an interview with you. Everyone would be like, why'd you make that decision? You'd probably have to get your own press secretary. Objection. All right, Mr. Lorestein, I'm not going to allow you to sit here and bribe the jury. I'd like the Oh my gosh. So here's the thing. As funny as it sounds, the defense lawyer was very, very close to an argument that is often used. He just spun it the complete wrong way. He was trying to appeal to the jury's own personal gain, the interviews, the fame, blah, 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 blah. But oftentimes if a case is high profiled, there's a lot of attention or pressure on the case or the government is putting in a lot of resources into the case, the defense lawyer will absolutely play a card similar to that. They will say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is the government versus my client. Government is an entity with seemingly unlimited power and resources. And they have thrown the book at my clients for the past however many years this investigation has going on his life has been in shambles with the fear of prosecution over his head the entire time it's been misery the founding fathers of our country knew what it was like to live under a tyrannical government 
That is why in our constitution, they afforded due process. And with that in mind, they decided that in these United States, you can only ever be convicted of a crime if the prosecution proves their case beyond a reasonable doubt. And while the government seems to have unlimited power, they do not. The power holders in this particular case are you, the 12 members of the jury, and that's by design, because they knew that a government with overarching power is a government not for the people. So we're asking you today, to stand up for the people. Do your constitutional duty. Do something you will be proud of. I promise you, you will remember this day for the rest of your life, however you vote. Wouldn't you want to go to bed at night every day knowing that you did the right thing? And with all that said, we're asking you to deliver the only just verdict here today, a verdict of not guilty. <laughs> Where was I going with that? Oh yeah. Um, so he was kind of on the right track, just kind of took the spin away from the societal good for all kind of spiel to the juries basically bribing them. That's not good. Moving on. Jury to ignore all the defense's previous statements. As would I. Good. <laughs> good. It's a fair call. It's a fair judge. I'm glad we're playing that way. I'm proud to say that that was a test. And you all passed. Let's just move this along, <laughs> sir. Okay. I've said my piece. In a second, you guys are going to go back there and decide guilty or not guilty. But as you're about to write down your verdict, I feel it's my duty to inform you that in exactly five seconds, it will officially become opposite day. <laughs> Objection! Hey, Mr. Lawyerstein, I will not allow that mental trickery in my court. I would like the jury to know that it is not, in fact, opposite day. That's not right, Your Honor. Lawyerstein, you tell these people that it's not opposite day. It's not opposite day. <laughs> Thank you. genius he's a genius this man should have been tim heidecker's lawyer i'm gonna get out my notepad i'm about to start taking some notes i did not know we could just call opposite day mind-blowing stuff we're all learning here y'all you're not welcome your honor hey ladies and gentlemen of the jury it is not opposite day whatever verdict you come back with will be literally interpreted as the verdict did you guys not get that? Hey, well, I will hold you in contempt. Uh, thank you. I mean, boo. Sit down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I apologize for all of this. I would like you to ignore everything that Lawyerstein has said here today. I assure you, it is not opposite day. Does everyone understand? <laughs> look at him. Are there any questions? <laughs> look at him, oh, look at him, look at him. <laughs> Does everyone understand? Are there any questions? Yes. So, it's not opposite day? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Kenny, let me take a shot. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defense is wrong. It's not opposite day. George, what are you doing? I got this. How you would never shush a judge like that. Not good. Also, and this is something we can learn from, something that I've had to learn personally. Obviously, this is a very extreme example, and it's funny, but little side games do go on in the courtroom, and it's important not to get sucked into the opposing counsel's side games. That's what they want you to do. Trial has a bunch of little gamesmanship type things, so it's important to stay focused, not get distracted, and continue on with your strategy. And here the prosecution is trying to undo the damage that the defense lawyer created instead of just letting it go and or having the judge just take care of it. And he's going to make things worse. However, opposite day doesn't start in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. One. one jinx personal jinx you can't speak till i say your name hey lawyerstein i will hold you in, in contempt. contempt double jinx 
Ha ha! Neither of you can speak till I say your names. All right. All right. All right. First, we had opposite day. Now we have calling jinx. This man's a genius. This man is a genius. All right. Now we're going to do court my way, the lawyer Steen way. <laughs> All right, court? music up. Uh huh. All right, ladies, tops off. All right. <laughs> and kids, I don't know what time it is there, but right here, it's 4.20. Uh, 420. Uh, 420. Uh, 420. Uh. He's even got the prosecutor in on it. And for anybody who might be wondering, court is not bumping like that. Bumping? Is that a good, is that a correct use of bumping? How do you say bumping? Court's not bumping. Court's not lively. Court's pretty mundane and boring. 420. Uh, the whitest kids you know. Coming soon to DVD. Uh, Uncensored. Wow, that was actually hilarious. I am a little upset that I'm only now finding out about this video at the passing of Trevor Moore. Trevor, you've made so many people laugh throughout your entire life and your videos will live forever and they will continue to make people laugh. I hope that you find peace wherever you are. Thanks again, brother, for everything that you brought into the world. And y'all, we're going to end on that note. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of y'all. My goal is always to make content worthy of your time and content that you enjoy or you can learn from and content that just makes people happy. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.